Welcome to Arizona Longtails. I'm here with my 12 foot V hole and a Duramax 440cc 18 horsepower engine. So this episode is going to be a technical episode just going through an upgrade I did on the engine using OEM Honda parts to beef up the charging circuit. The Honda motors are known to have the standard 1 to 3 amp, a 10 amp and then still a higher 15 to 20 amp charge circuit and it all has to do with the uh, stator built into them. This would be about a 15 to 20 amp stator. This is a bigger one. This one actually goes on a 670 two cylinder engine. And these are the stock ones that come in most uh, Predator engines or any stock systems. You get one just one charge coil and then you get this little uh, diode that rectifies it. So you only get about one amp at the circuit and you only get the one amp around 3600 RPM, full RPM. So one amp ain't gonna charge much of your battery systems when you're running it. Uh, definitely going to a five amp, 10 amp is gonna be worth the money uh, just to keep your systems um, up and running from there. That's why I like the Duramax 18 horsepower because you got the electric start, but you also have the pull start option. If your battery does die, you can still run the engine. That was always something I was worried about with my 670 motor that if I use the trolling motor a little too longer and the battery dies, it, yeah, I won't be able to start the engine. On this 12 footer, the weight was a factor. I wanted to keep it real light, so I only had one battery up front running the trolling motor, but it did feed to the, to the motor. So, so uh, charging it is gonna be a good assurance if my battery is running low, at least I know I could uh, you know, run the motor for 20 minutes or run upstream and by the time I get there, my trolling motor is going to be ready to, to move again. So this is the inside of the stator coil right behind the flywheel. We removed the ignition coil and this is the charge coil. So on most engines they just have one, you know, it's rated for one amp of charging power. Uh, so that's, that's part of the component. And then the other component that causes the charge is these magnets on the flywheel. So as the, as the flywheel spins, they, uh, then the coil stationary with this with the flywheel spinning around it these magnets create a magnetic field which in, induce a charge and that charge is then put out to um, back to the battery so when that charge comes out from that coil it comes back to the back side here which is the brown wire and it goes to a single output diode as you can see here so this diode rectifies the AC voltage to DC from there this output goes to the circuit breaker to protect any overcurrent. And then from there, you do have this white wire that goes back to your battery terminal. And that's how it charges your battery. Then that back backs feeds all the way back to your battery system. So people do add a second coil, which just mounts right here. And they do that brown wire tapped into uh, this wire again so now you got two coils going to that single wire going to that diode and that doubles up your current output but you're still limited because this one coil half of it is grounded to chassis uh, so you're not getting a full AC or a true sine wave to the battery you're only getting uh, half a ripple and then just that half a ripple gets rectified Okay, so off camera, I did a little bit of the mounting. So I just put spade connectors on the AC input to the rectifier. I had a mounting bolt available right here that is grounded to chassis. So that, at least for now, will hold it in place. This is gonna be our DC positive out. I have a 10 amp circuit breaker that for now, at least for this test, I'm gonna put in line. And then this would go to the battery. 
so the charge will go straight back to the battery. The two AC outputs from the coil stator will connect to the voltage regulator. So AC out output from the stator will flow into the voltage regulator. AC voltage could be up to 45 volts AC, but this will rectify it and uh, regulate it to the, you're probably gonna want like 13 and a half volts DC out. So then that will go back to the system. So I already did the uh, two coil installation from uh, the Honda OEM. Part number 31630-ZE2-861. Uh, Amazon was the one that had the best price on it. About $90 after tax and shipping. Uh, and uh, also from Amazon, you will need a voltage regulator. So we'll have AC voltage going into the yellow wires, grounds up to chassis, and then this red wire is gonna send positive voltage to a back to your battery. So you'll need a voltage regulator which will replace the little diode that you originally had. The bad thing about this diode, you only get halfway rectification. So you get positive and negative, you're only gonna rectify the positive so you only get halfway rectification where because of the voltage regulator you get positive and negative uh, of the AC cycle going to the regulator internally has a bridge rectifier that has four diodes and when it's positive it's and negative it's still rectifying both waves down to the positive side to give you more uh, more constant voltage and overall it's going to keep up the amperage the major difference uh which can't see here let me uh disconnect one so we could see the major difference between the coil and the the original coil because a lot of people just get another one of these basic coils and add it to the bottom because this one's just on top running one wire there this one is two coils that already come spliced together from the factory these coils don't ground out to chassis the uh, the internal wiring is uh, two wires so these don't touch the the frame or the chassis. This coil does have one leg that grounds the chassis and the other one that goes to the output diode. So that's where you need to uh, go with this system and a voltage regulator and that's how you really get uh, better amperage out of, uh, out of your system. I originally bought this stator uh, as I'm more used to these style of stators on larger engines to generate output voltage. The same concept that you got two AC leads coming out, this would go to your voltage regulator and then from there it would rectify to uh, your battery. I ran this one and it, it gave me very little output and, and sense of voltage. It, it wasn't giving me enough charging from it or at least nothing noticeable from, from the factory charge system and I think the issue is that these do require a different type of flywheel because on this flywheel this is the OEM one from the Duramax you only got two um, magnets these are just um, pieces of iron on the on the flywheel but these does have two magnets so when I've used this one before it actually has a lot of uh, uh, individual magnets so I, I guess it just helps maintain that individual uh, coil to, to provide a charge more consistently and you can see the winding on this is a lot thicker than the little uh, cable that you know this type of coil has so I thought this was all I needed plus the voltage regulator and you know get 15 uh, amps of charging circuit but I believe you'll need this the voltage regulator and the specific flywheel for that to work so this this was a bust you know I was hoping that would have worked um, this one I ordered from a Craftsman 420cc engine, uh, you know, rather than going with the OEM one just to try it out. And, uh, you know, I was hoping that was going to be the ticket, but it didn't seem to work. So that's when I went with, uh, with the Honda coils and I couldn't find anything aftermarket. So I had to go with something more OEM. The Predator 212 or the Honda GX 190s 
and the 390s, the Predator 4, 4, uh, 420s, uh, as, as long as the Duramax 420, all seem to have the same charge system internally. So I, I believe this modification would work on those smaller engines too. Uh, something to keep in mind is that when you have a charge system, same thing like an alternator in a car, it does produce some, some drag. If it's really putting out output, charging a battery, there is some, you know, magnetic resistance it's going to cause to the engine. So it's going to, you know, in a sense, rob you of some power. So it's also something to keep in mind if you do this on a smaller engine. The benefit is voltage, which for me, it would be worthwhile, especially with the motor package that I got. You know, it should be able to, if I could afford to lose some power, but it's something to keep in mind in there. But, but yeah, that's where I wanted to speak about this coil, which is, this is the, the heavy duty coil. Um, I believe if you went with OEM Honda, it was going to be about, you know, $400 plus, plus shipping, which I imagine the flywheel is going to be a couple bucks on shipping for the proper flywheel coil and um, OEM voltage regulator. So that's just something to keep in mind where where this package right here we're probably we're still under hundred and ten dollars at that you know it's about fifteen dollars on Amazon for the voltage regulator and about ninety dollars for the charge coil the only de details you'll also need would be uh, new hardware your factory two bolts that hold your original coil are just a hair shorter you can tell there it's not much but it is on the shorter side uh, so I had luckily I had four bolts that were the same thread and just a hair longer just to be able to tighten down um, well because I think this one in see it barely good doesn't even grab it barely will grab but I wanted a little bit more bite from the factory bolts so, so you need to get some longer ones on that so I'll start reassembling and then we could do some voltage tests with the meters and we could see the output. Okay, so right now I got the battery at 12.16 volts. Uh, the amp meter is in the AC setting. This one doesn't test for DC. So I'm checking the AC amp draw to calculate how much amperage we're, we're putting out to the battery. Ideally I'd want to do the DC one, but that meter is not available at the moment. So I'm going to start it and we'll check how high the voltage goes up. Ideally, as the RPMs go up, it puts out more output um, in relation to to speed, but we'll, we'll see what we could get. So we could see that we're getting 12.6 at about four, four and a half amps. That's a big improvement as the test I did originally with the stock system. At 3600 RPM, I was barely getting one amp. If that, we're getting less than an amp. So, you know, there is a charge system in there, but I'd say it's uh, almost a gimmick at that point. Uh, you're definitely not going to charge anything at that rate. Uh, it'd be almost like a trickle charge. You'd need a good 12 hours just to, to get some something showing there. Uh, similar to a car automotive battery, you want your battery to be, 
you know, closer to 13, 13 and a half when charging. That's the only time when you put a higher voltage to the batteries when it's going to pick up a charge. Any voltage lower than that is going to drain it or, or just be a mute point. It's not going to go up. So, so definitely it putting out, you know, 12.6 uh, volts when running is showing that alone is showing that there's some voltage going back to the battery. And then the amp meter is showing that there is that four amp range. And like I said, you're probably about $110 in. Hopefully, you know, people find out about it and, you know, don't bring up the price on that. Unfortunately, I didn't find an aftermarket option. If not that, I could bring down the cost of the coils alone, that being the highest cost of this. The volts regulators are, you know, very common. Uh, I'll put a link on that. I'll put the link on the Honda parts. And, you know, it's, you know, it'd be a 30 minute job to swap out, uh, run the wiring. Uh, I did forget that. I, I just ran the wiring, how the original ones came out. Comes out through, through here. Got the zip ties, um, which are the two uh, gray and, and white wires coming in. Space connections going to the two yellow ones. And your red ones going to circuit breaker. And then, well, I used orange wire, but that goes back to your battery. And that's your charge system. And then the battery, uh, I have it connected. Going to... Uh, the bus bars on my system got my uh, voltage reader you know set up here this um, runs underneath throughout the boat to uh, another bus bar this is where a hardwire or I'm not hardwire I bolt on the trolling motor or any other accessories I want to use up front and then this does go to a uh, 80 amp circuit breaker which I also use as the kill switch to disconnect the battery from the boat that way when it's storing I don't have to worry about the wires touching and then that just goes to my battery system here so I think it's a good upgrade especially you know there's a lot of us put a lot more money into other things into these motors building them up um, on performance wise I think this is a good reliability option you know it's real basic uh, you got all the main components there don't have to machine anything I think the hardest part is just getting the hardware to, to make it work, the four bolts for the coil. But aside from that, you know, on the 212 it could work. Um, trying to think what what other options there is to go with it. But I think that's it. So thanks guys for watching, like and subscribe. Message us, do any comments if you have any questions and we'll help you guys out. Till next time.